Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high functioning autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. In this particular video, I'm going to introduce four characters, two heroes, and two villains. And I just hope that I do this video correctly in terms of satisfaction on your guys' behalf. So if you guys please bear with me as I introduce them. The first one I'll introduce is basically a villain, but with a decent reason to be a villain, if that makes any sense. Captain Slime. Real name, none. Height, 5 feet 11 inches, weight 164 pounds. Status, villain, and legendary space pirate. Base, deep space. Intelligence, 4.5 brains. Behavior. Murderous, insane, and determined. She'll go to any lengths to steal. Lethality. As above. She would even trash her own servants. Weaknesses. She is quick to lose temper. All her weapons, despite their power, are still flawed in some way. She has a bad habit of drinking gasoline. Powers. She has an octopus tentacle that could stretch up to a mile without pain. Acute sight and hearing, martial arts, and is extremely ruthless. She commands a group of androids that she manufactured herself. Her weapons include a silver-coated cutlass and a blunderbuss that shoots plasma and nuclear shells. She could also survive unaided in the depths of space. Eyes, green left eye still intact, hair, brownish black, and filled with lice. Origin Captain Slime is the sole survivor of a planet of space pirates, known simply as Vercanus, which was destroyed by a creature known as the Cosmic Crab. Donning a jagged scar on her right eye from the tragedy, she and her androids traveled the cosmos in a metallic star pirate ship, propelled by rocket engines, trying to collect enough valuable items to power a machine that could resurrect her home planet and species. She eventually traveled to Earth from the rumor that Pym, Madame Shear, and the Master created a device that can turn anything into solid diamond or gold. While struggling to obtain the device, Captain Slime ended up being turned into a golden statue and was transported to the moon for good measure. But a side effect on the device made it temporary, and Captain Slime recovered. She afterwards tried to convince Dark Pym to help get payback on the heroes of the default Earth, despite that Dark Pym isn't willing to help. Costume She wears the traditional pirate clothing. Teams, solitary, or with other villains. Virtual inspiration, space pirates. The next one that I'm going to introduce is another, is a, is a hero, just so you know. And I hope it's comprehensible for you guys. Here it is. Dragonoid. Real name, Karen Kara C. Height, 6 feet 4 inches to 3,800 feet. Weight, 214 pounds to unrevealed. Status, anti-hero and Avenging League member. Base, New York Mobile. Intelligence, two and a half brains to five brains. Behavior, lovely yet moody. She is fond of all protein. Lethality, very deadly. She's known to win a fight against Queen Hydra. Weaknesses, easily angered. She is literally cold-blooded. Powers, she has great size and strength, sharp claws and teeth, sharp horns, a long tail, Thick scales, mass alteration, and wings that allow flight. She has an organ connected to her lungs that makes her able to emit breath weapons. For example, flames, lightning, bitter cold, acid, slow gas, nuclear beams, cosmic beams, plasma beams, 
and euphoria gas. Eyes, pink with vertical pupils. Hair, light green. Origin. Kara Seam was once an average woman with a bad smoking problem. One day, she was used as a guinea pig by Tyranitar to cure her addiction, but with the cost of becoming a weapon to destroy mankind. Kara lost her addiction, but it forever changed her into a humanoid dragon hybrid. Being nicknamed Dragonoid, Kara flew to New York and started attacking the city until being defeated by Colossa. When Tyranitar tried to force her to destroy Colossa, Dragonoid used her euphoria gas on Tyranitar and left her getting incapacitated by Colossa. Though moody at times, Dragonoid was pardoned by the Avenging League and became a new member of the team, along with being marked as a hero for the innocents. Costume She's covered in green scales with some patches of human skin. Teams Solitary, with the Avenging League, and other heroes. Orzal Inspiration, Dragons. The next one is another evil counterpart from the untrusted dimension, just so you know. And I hope you guys enjoy the ride so far, because I'm trying to make this work. Dark Dragonoid. Real name, Kara Seen. Height, 6 feet to 1,000 feet. Weight, 277 pounds to unrevealed. Status, villain, enemy of Dragonoid. Base, untrusted dimension, mobile. Intelligence, 3.5 reigns. Behavior, stubborn and murderous. She'll do anything to kill Dragonoid. Lethality, unbearably deadly to most opponents. Weaknesses, cosmic goddesses, and being rivaled. Powers. She possesses the same powers as Dragonoid, along with utter insanity. Eyes, deep pink with vertical pupils. Hair, deep green and a short bob. Origin. In the untrusted dimension, the native Dragonoid is a murderous counterpart of her known as Dark Dragonoid. One day, she learned about the existence of Dragonoid, and traveled via Vortex in order to destroy her. Luckily, before Dark Dragonoid could kill her innocent counterpart, Dentrony arrived and saved Dragonoid by knocking Dark Dragonoid unconscious. Eventually, the evil witch Dr. Voodoo recovered the evil monster from the unintended outcome, and Dark Dragonoid would since do anything to get her revenge. Costume she wears the same outfit as Dragonoid. Team Solitary or with other villains. Original Inspiration, Dragons. There's one more character for me to introduce. Just so you know, and it's a hero. I hope you guys are bearing with me and such. You know how it is. Just please. Elastic. Real name, Stephanie Allens. Height, 5 feet 11 inches. Weight, 191 pounds. Status, hero, and five senses member. Base, New York City, mobile. Intelligence, two and a half brains. Behavior, witty, yet immature. She's very protective for the innocents. Lethality, she's only a threat to those who wish harm to others. Weaknesses. Extreme temperatures. Powers. She has extreme levels of elasticity. She could stretch her arm from the default Earth all the way to Pluto without feeling any pain. She can morph into anything useful in a certain situation. She's nearly unbreakable, being able to be slammed by a train without getting harmed. She could also eat a few thousand pounds of food without getting sick. Eyes. Deep green. Air, brownish black. Origin. Stephanie Helens was born with a bone disorder that gives severe arthritis in all her joints. One day, Stephanie was invited by the master to receive an injection that would cure her disorder. However, the injection was too potent, 
and it gave Stephanie some elastic abilities. It also gave her a new personality, from shy and lonesome to random and exaggerated. Later, the newly formed Elastic encountered the duplicating Spawn while fighting Electrica at Grand Central Station. And due to being conductible, she helped Spawn by wrapping herself around Electrica and allowing Spawn to give Electrica a knockout punch. Since then, Elastic and Spawn became allies and friends, as well as Elastic becoming friends with other heroes, including Mega Maid, Optic, Bixie, Supernova, Alice, and others. Costume. She wears a greenish turquoise latex suit that stretches with her. Teams. Solitary, with the five senses, and other heroes. Order and Inspiration. Marvel's Mr. Fantastic and DC's Plastic Man. Well, those are the four characters I'll introduce for this video. And, um... Just so you know, um, on Thursday, I'll have my orientation working at McDonald's. So I hope there's some satisfaction there, and I hope you guys enjoyed the creations that I've been making past, present, and future in any aspect. And, um, I, I also sometimes feel a bit paranoid, like, whenever it comes to me having to make my next video within a certain time lapse, if that makes sense. Which is stupid, if you think about it, I know. But, I just like to feel some support, because, do you guys truly care for my creations? Or are you just being polite? It's good that you want to compliment me in being polite, but I also like some honesty so I could be sure that you're being sincere about it, rather than just being all willy-nilly about it. If you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. You don't have to. And I uh, hope you guys have a fine rest of the month and such. I hope everything goes in proper symmetry in the long run. And until next time, in transmission.